Oof. I've literally had the longest day ever. <coughs> Hello, quite stressed. Maddie, really long day? <coughs> Maddie? Hello? Hello? <gasps> Sorry, what were you saying? <laughs> Watermelon? No, thank you, I don't want a watermelon. Um, I was just saying that I had to get up at 3 a.m. to call my boss in LA. Ooh. And that was just the start of it. And I'm sorry, where have you even been? Samoa and Tonga, I'm basically a time traveler. Care to explain? Sure. So we've all had days that feel like the longest day ever, but that got me thinking, how could I literally have the longest day ever? What would I have to do? And then that got me onto the very confusing subject of global time zones, the international dateline and time travel. Imagine this watermelon is our planet. It's a rough rotating sphere and it rotates an entire 360 degrees in 24 hours, which is the time it takes from sunrise to sunrise. Knowing this, we can work out how far the world travels in one hour. So if we take our 360 degree rotation and divide it by 24, we get 15. So every single hour, the world rotates 15 degrees. And we mark this using vertical lines of longitude, also known as meridians and quite handily this watermelon here has veins which will represent those quite nicely 24 vertical meridians each one marking 15 degrees and one hour's worth of time it's all very well having 24 one hour zones on our planet but we need them to start somewhere and this is where the greenwich meridian comes in it marks zero degrees the point where time starts and it runs through greenwich in london the greenwich meridian marked out by my beautiful red sticky dots was chosen as the starting point of time zero degrees because at the time in 1884 72 percent of the world's commerce depended on sea charts which used Greenwich as their prime meridian. So this is where it all begins. It's midday GMT, Greenwich Meridian time. The sun is directly overhead. However, it was midday one hour previously, plus one, that's to the east of our line. So if I just rotate the earth backwards 15 degrees, we can see here, we find midday on plus one. I then rotate to the east 15 degrees and continue to our minus one line. We find it's not midday till one hour later. And this is why we have plus lines of longitude and minus lines of longitude as the earth continues to rotate in an easterly direction. As long as we know the location of two places on Earth, we can work out the exact time difference between them. LA is 120 degrees away from the UK. If I divide 120 by 15, that's 15 degrees per hour, I get eight. That's eight hours. So the UK is eight hours ahead of LA. Minus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, Stress Maddie called at 3 a.m. If we subtract eight hours, it was only 7 p.m. in LA. The Greenwich Meridian marks time zero and enables us to add or subtract hours so we can work out time differences across the globe. But we need a way of defining exactly when a new day starts. After all, you can't continue to fly around the world in an easterly direction just subtracting hours as you go because you would lose days and that's time travel, which is impossible. Yet. As there are 24 hours in a day, it makes sense for a new date to start 12 hours or 180 degrees away from the meridian line. So if I subtract 12 hours, we find ourselves at the international date line. Now here we have from 12 p.m. till 12 midnight on a Monday. The moment we cross over, we find ourselves at 1 a.m. on our Tuesday. Tuesday then starts to grow, slowly eating up Monday as the Earth rotates until eventually we get to Tuesday, 12 p.m. Now there's only so much I can show you with a watermelon, so I'll leave some video with better graphics down in the doobie doo. So the date immediately to the left-hand side of the international date line will always be one day ahead of the date immediately to the right-hand side of the international date line. In fact, if you were to go to the North Pole, you could walk around in circles crossing from day to day. Conveniently, the international date line largely lies in the Pacific Ocean. However, you can see it's not quite straight as it's been moved slightly over the years to accommodate the needs of various countries. As I'm sure you can imagine, it can be pretty frustrating for two countries to do business with each other when they're only a mere few hours apart but exist on completely different days. For example, over here, these guys can be working away busy on a Monday and only a few hours away, everyone's still chilling over here on a Sunday. 
but that is exactly what happens for Tonga and America Samoa. Tonga and Samoa are in the same time zone but are split by the international dateline. That means when it's 5pm on a Monday in Tonga, it's only 5pm on a Sunday in American Samoa but they're just an hour and a half flight away from each other, a mere 552 miles. Therefore, if I spent my entire Saturday on Tonga, I could then catch a plane at midnight and an hour and a half later find myself in American Samoa at 1.30am on Saturday and have the whole day again. Technically, my entire day could last 48 hours and that's just by crossing the international dateline. <laughs> Sorry, watermelon. Okay. <laughs> Imagine. Oh no, I've sliced it. Oh, 